Jane Donawald. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you a really interesting way to take an inkjet copy and transfer it onto watercolor paper. Now there are lots of ways to do transfers. It's one of my favorite things to do and you may or may not already be familiar with the fact that you can use a laser co color copy and matte medium to do a transfer in a very similar way but inkjet's always been off the chart because the ink bleeds. So this is a little trick that keeps the ink from bleeding and makes it a really useful way to make a transfer if you don't own a laser printer and all you've got is the inkjet. You may be wondering how I would use this kind of a transfer. I specifically make transfers on the watercolor paper and then I cut them out and I use them in collage, so that would be one option. You could use them if you were doing an art journal, but because this paper is going to get wet, you don't want to do this kind of transfer in, on, the, on, on the actual page of a journal. Rather, you would want to do this on the watercolor paper and then cut it out and add it to your journal. This is a great way to transfer photographs of people and then enhance them and work back into them. I could work on a piece of watercolor paper and create several transfers on one sheet and then go back in and work it with ink and silk screen printing or using a thermofax or embellishing it in lots of different ways. I could even collage fabric onto it. So let's get started and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, the very first trick. So here's my little color copy made on my inkjet printer. And what I want to do first to set this up so that it won't, it, it helps keep it from bleeding, is that I want to spray it with a clear acrylic finish. I prefer matte. I haven't used gloss, so I'm going to recommend that you choose a matte finish. I like this Krylon low odor finish, but you still want to use sprays like this outdoors because they contain toxic elements that you really don't want to inhale. So for that reason, I'm not actually going to spray this right now. I already sprayed it prior to filming. But essentially what you're doing is you're just putting a real light coating over the copy and allowing it to dry. So that's step number one. After the copy is dry, I'm going to open my matte medium. And the matte gel medium I'm using right now is the thick version. There's another version of gel medium that comes in a bottle like this. And this is not what you want. This might work on some paper if the paper's pretty thin, but in general, the thicker variety is more guaranteed to work. So what I'm gonna do is take the gel medium and spread it on the watercolor paper. Now using watercolor paper is a pretty important key to making this work because the paper does have to be immersed in water for a little bit. And if you use a thinner paper, it will just disintegrate and it'll totally work against you. So I'm spreading out a nice layer of this as even as I can get it. And then I'm going to put my copy on top of that medium and then I'm gonna rub it down. Now, a soft cloth can work pretty well for this. I don't really like a brayer because if I use a brayer for the kind of burnishing that I'm doing, and I'm gonna wipe off this excess, you don't need to do that, but you can if you want to. Make it easier for me to rub this. If I rub it with my fingers, I can rub out any little air pockets so I get a complete transfer. If I use a brayer and I brayer across it, sometimes I get ridges and then that turns into an imperfect print at the end. I'm gonna make sure all the edges are nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna wait for this to dry completely, which could take as long as an hour. Okay, once my copy is nice and dry, I'm going to put it in a bin of lukewarm, plain water. And so I already have a copy that's been sitting in this bin of water for roughly three minutes. And you can see that the color has actually pushed through the paper. The paper backing has not yet been removed. So in order to remove the paper backing, I have an old washcloth that's clean, even though it's pretty beat up and I'm just very lightly gonna start rubbing the surface of the paper. And you can see how it peels right off. Isn't that cool? 
but the color doesn't bleed and the majority of the color stays on the watercolor paper even though you see a little bit of staining in the paper that I'm rubbing off. Let me turn it around so you can get an even better look. So when I rub off all of this paper, voila, pretty sweet. Now, let me show you a couple of things. Here's why it's so important to keep track of the time. I put this particular print in the water and I forgot about it and I went back about 10 minutes later and I went ahead and removed the paper, but you can see how much more faded it is than the one that I did for three minutes. Three minutes is plenty of time for that paper to get nice and soft. If it's just cheap printer paper, it works like a dream. Now I wanna remind you that I did put down a towel here so that when I was working on the wet print, I didn't get it on my table surface. So that might be a little trick that you want to remember as well. So once this is dry, it's completely stable, and I can work back into it with ink tents, crayons or blocks, or I could screen print onto it, I could hand color it, I could add additional design elements. There are all kinds of things I could do. Or, as I mentioned earlier, I could cut this out and add it to a journal page, an art journal page, uh, an accordion book I was working on, all kinds of applications there. So I hope this is a great trick that you can add to your repertoire so you can take full advantage of that inkjet printer. And if you enjoyed this little tutorial with me, I hope you will subscribe to my channel, leave questions down below, and I'll see you next time.